Alex just told me about Sinbad. What happened? It was a hit and run. How is he? Well, he's still in the hospital. But is it serious? Well, when I left, they were doing x-rays and some tests, you know. How is he today? Well, I rang the Aussie this morning. They just said they'd wait for the doctor to see him. Oh, is that it? Well, you know what the Aussie's like, mate. I'll tell you nothing over the phone, do you? I really want to go and see him. There's only three of us working in the bar. I'm just going to have to tell Bruno that I'm going if things aren't good. Oh, right. I'll give it half an hour or so, then I'll ring the Aussie. Now, if it looks like they're going to keep him in or there's anything to worry about, we'll both get over there right away. OK? OK. Come on. about Sinbad. He's been in a hit and run. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, I don't know how bad he is or anything, but he's in hospital. Well, let's hope it's nothing too serious. Yeah, he's had a share of bad luck, hasn't he? It's explosion in there. Yeah. Look, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm just trying to grab five minutes. I'm extremely busy. Oh, right. Um, it's your windows. Which ones? On the extension. You're going to have to choose the shape, you know. <sighs> Does it have to be right this minute? Well, the thing is, I'm ready to get the frames. I want to make sure you're happy with the shape and the furniture. You know the handles in there? Yes, I know what furniture is. But I'd prefer to discuss it with Ollie before I come to any final decision. Well, I might hold us up a bit. <sighs> Mr Shadwick, at the rate you're going, the Millennium Dome will be finished <sighs> before my single-storey extension. Yeah, but it'll be cheaper and someone will like it. <sighs> we live in hope. Well, it's up to you, love. I'll leave those for your perusal forthwith. But as soon as you can, please. I don't want anyone thinking I'm slacking, you know. <sighs> Would I? Fancy a tune of my own? Oh, no way. I don't want cellulite around me bum, me hips. And who's gonna see it? All the fellas on the beach in Ibiza. Nicky, face it. Me dad would rather see you boarded up in the bedroom than let you go to Ibiza with your mates. Thanks to you screwing things up for me with Katrina. And what's that got to do with it? Well, as dad's go, he was fairly trusting. But since all this abortion business, he's clamping down. Oh, so it's my fault? Well, I reckon he would have let me go before all this kicked off. He thinks I'm going to go home pregnant or something. You've ruined it for me. Oh, yeah. Well, not that, Nicky. That's for the barbecue. Nicky, I think you should be allowed to go to Ibiza. But you can't blame me just because my Algaf's given you pressure. Yeah, I am. They're about the holiday again. Yeah. Dad's been out buying old holiday clothes and factors. I'm stuck in here like some nun taking a vows. I am working on your dad, love. You won't budge. How many's going? Four. Any lads? Why would I want to go on holiday with lads? Just say yes or no. No. Is it a proper hotel? Yeah, it's half board. Like I say, I'll have a go, but I'm not promising anything. It should be you who's having a go for me, seeing as this is all your fault. Hi. Oh, hi. I didn't hear you come in. You busy? Um, yeah, just preparing a case for the mags. Shut it. Can you do a split shift on Saturday, Rachel? Again? I did it last Saturday. Oh, no, but I need someone with a bit of nurse on an email. Well, actually, I'll get you everywhere, eh? I wish I did. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Look, I know that what went on between us the other week wasn't anything special for you, but... Is there any chance for us agreeing not to mention this again, please? Yeah. But let's just keep everything pleasant, shall we? Because we've still got to work together. Unless you've got other ideas. You got a little bit? Yeah, come in now. Sinbad! All right, mate. Well, what happened? You don't want to know. Sin, you all right now? A bit bruised, now. Could have been a really bad day, couldn't it? Yeah, I've got a couple of me ribs in, you know, a bit sore. Look, if you want to take the rest of the week off, then. Yeah, you should put your feet up. You're joking at me. I mean, it's a work. Didn't get me wrapping on, mate. Look, you've been in the Aussie all night. Are you going to pay me sick pay? Well, it's a bit tight, lad. I'm going to this new school and that, you know. Exactly. So I better get my sleeves rolled up, hadn't I? Take the day off at least. Look, Rach, I'm working. I'll see you later. 
don't feel that sorry for him. Don't worry, Rach. I'll make sure he doesn't do any heavy lifting. So, have you been busy? Yeah, rushed off my feet. Katie's at the magistrate's court today, getting a feel of procedure. Well, can I give you a hand? Would you? Yeah, sure. I'll have to make a drink first. No, anyone who comes all the way from Reading to be a girl Friday deserves a cuppa. Um, uh, have you seen anything of Marcus? Um, no. And I must say I felt a lot more relaxed since he's been out of my hair. Well, so to speak. Hello, kids and solicitors. Oh, hi, Louise. Um, can I speak to Katie, please? All oh, right. Um, well, when will she be back? Right. Well, we tell to give me a call when she does get back then. Yes, yeah, certainly. How are you anyway? Um, I'm great, thanks. Uh, Birmingham's great as well. See you. Yeah, well, missed the World Cup, but next season, eh, lads? Nice one, that's great. Thanks very much. Thanks. I didn't think it'd be so big. Yep, nice, full of surprises. I didn't realise Jackie had ordered one. She didn't. I made a decision. Well, won't she mind? It'll bring punters in, especially when the footy season starts. But did you speak? No, but they're on Barry. will probably be busy planning the health club at the back, won't they? Sorry if I seemed a bit off before. Yeah, well, to be honest, you've been a bit off since the night we're never going to mention again. We had a one-night stand and that was it. A one-night stand? Yeah. What's wrong with that? Lads do it all the time. <sighs> That's what this is all about, isn't it? What? Are you upset because I'm doing what you've probably been doing for years or whatever women you could get hold of? <gasps> Normally it is wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and on to the next one. But this was different. It felt like a little bit more than another notch on a bedpost. That's all it was to me. Are you sure, Rachel? Yeah, positive. Tighten that up, son. Sure. In fact, why don't I do that? You can get into your butties. Now, I want to finish this before I get my butties. Yeah? Yeah. Well, get on with it. It's about our Nicky. Oh, what's she done now? Nothing. Everything's great. It's just that... I think she'd be all right on that holiday. Do you? Yeah, yeah she's that sensible now, isn't she? Yeah, well, everyone's sensible when the mother and father's around, aren't they, son? Dad, she's not me. No, she's got her head screwed on. It's a vineyard and never had any problems, have they? Yeah, well, it's a first time for everything, especially if I'm not around. Hiya, Dad. Hiya, babe. Can I just have another word about this holiday? What is this, a pincer movement? See, what I've worked out is... And what I've worked out is I'm not made of money. But Aunt Emily goes all over the place with the running. That costs you a fortune. In case you've forgotten, it's costing me a grand up front before you go to university. A grand? Yeah. And I'm going to be paying out for the next three years. So is it just about money? Amongst other things, yeah. Well, let's just concentrate on the money for now, then. Can you leave it, eh? I'm trying to work, Nicky. Oh, but, Dad... No! That's right, sis. I'm just going to have to try a bit harder. Lisa, where have you been? Berlin, remember? It was a brilliant conference. Yeah, but I thought you'd come back yesterday. I decided to take in a bit of sightseeing. Brandenburg Gate, Checkpoint Charlie, that sort of thing. What did they tell you? Pardon? Max and Susanna. I suppose you've known all along, haven't you? Jackie, what are you talking about? All I was was back up, wasn't I? Just in case it went wrong for them. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Divvy working class girl, bit of rough, who'll have her kids, but if our own baby comes along, we'll dump her. What? Oh, don't try and kid me, Lisa. Susanna would have phoned you as soon as she knew she was pregnant. I had absolutely no idea. Honestly. Well, it's true. They're having their own baby. I don't believe this. I knew something like this would happen. So you did know then? No, but this is exactly the type of complication that I warned Susanna and Max about. Yeah. 
Well, their little complication has landed me racing. So is it joyriders? I haven't got a clue. Look, there was no reg numbers and no witnesses. I would never catch them. I don't know. You're not safe anywhere these days, are you? Hey, you say good me, babe. <sighs> My hero. Well, I'm coming back later. I'm going to give you something special. All right, can I watch? See ya. I'll tell you what, mate, if she'd have seen me first, you wouldn't have got a look in. In your dreams, uh, mate. I'm gonna take a painkiller. Look, Sin, take a day off if you like. Work a day in Lou. Go away. It's a long way to Cornwall, you know. <laughs> so listen, what do you think of Paul in then? Great, isn't she? I'll tell you what I think. Go ahead. She's got a fella. Get out of it. Well, what do you know about it? I know enough, mate. Mm -hmm. About her family, friends? Sin, she hasn't got a fella. Was that what she told you, or is that what you know for Defo? Look, I'm just having a good time with her, that's all. Well, I just think that you're getting in a little bit over your head, that's all. And don't forget, you know, you've got two kids to consider. <laughs> yeah, and what have they got to do with them? Well, if it gets messy, they could get it. found amongst the papers I was tidying up for you. Great granny, is it? I'll read it later. Now, should I take these things off for you? Yep, that's the lot now. What time are the lads in? Any minute now. They're waking over the road. No doubt my dad's thought of another 40 million more excuses why I can't go on holiday. Where are you supposed to be going, love? Been invited to Ibiza, Nan. But my dad won't let me go. All right, babe. Hey, love. Your mum's here. I told you this morning I was doing a dark wash, didn't I? Yeah, what didn't need nothing do? There were two pairs of socks, a pair of undies and a black T-shirt under your bed. It was it me Black Calvin Clan? The DKMY. Hey, you, that's my T-shirt. Yeah, but you never wear it. I never get the chance. Yeah, she's got me Tommy Hilfiger on. I see you don't like it, do you? All right, your room's a mess. Get it sorted. And get rid of all those girly magazines under your bed. They're disgusting. There's good articles in them. Well on, gynaecology. Get rid of them and go and get washed for tea. I'll just say hello to me now first. Listen, Greg, can we have a word about our Nicky in this holiday? Oh, this isn't going to be a war of attrition, is it? Oh, no, just listen. She's worked really hard for her A-levels. Be like a little reward for it. Little, little cost of fortune. Well, we can sort it out. Oh, she really wants to go. Mark, she's a kid. There's all sorts going on over there. Yeah, like in Butlins when we went. We were caught and she's going with a gang of mates. Anything could happen. The fellas will be all over it. She's an intelligent young woman. She can handle herself. Yeah, and I bet you thought that about the ginger one and work until she got out of her depth. This is our daughter we're talking about, who we've brought up properly. Yeah, and we thought that about our Jason until he got Katrina pregnant. Greg, I'm telling you, if you don't give in on this, there's going to be a big kick-off like Jason. <laughs> if that's what it takes. <sighs> Even if he just starts talking to him. <sighs> Honestly, Greg, sometimes. All right, Mum. Hiya, son. Do you mind waiting till we all sit down? No, I'm starving. Come on, you should get washed. What's the real reason he won't let her go? He's worried about her, Jess. Mum, I'm 18. He's treating me like I'm a little kid. You've got to work on him gently. Very gently. Here's a list of tomorrow's appointments, and these are on Katie's desk, so I presume they're to be signed? Oh, thanks, yes, I'll sign those. And if you could make a list on the computer that they've gone out, that'd be a great help. Yeah, sure. I really appreciate your help, you know. I enjoy it. Anyway, the typing practice will come in handy for my essays at uni. Oh, yes, I want to talk to Tom and Joan about the fees. That's all right, it's all sorted out. I know, but I'd like to make a contribution. That's all right, honestly. They've taken out some insurance policies to cover my maintenance. And that's great, but I'd like to pay for your first tuition fees. And I'm sure saving £1,000 would be a great help to them. That's a lot of money. I know. But although I have to keep reminding myself, you are my daughter, and I'm very proud of you. Thanks. It's weird, really, because it's a bit like that for me. In what way? Well, I have to keep reminding myself that you're my mother. <laughs> well, that's hardly surprising, seeing as Tom and Joan brought you up. And very well, I might say. They said they're going to come up and see me with the week I start university. Oh, good. That'll be nice to see them. Right, let's get on. What is it? Marcus wants to help towards my uni fees as well. Oh, does he? Well, his book's probably being launched in September, and with some of the money he made from that... Well, I wouldn't count on it making him a millionaire, Louise. No, but it's the thought that counts. 
Anyway, I think the book's good, don't you? I saw the manuscript on your desk. Oh, did you? All his points are really clear, aren't they? Well, and he's dedicated it to us. What? Look. Where did you get that? I popped in to see Marcus on my way to Reading. A love affair interrupted for Eleanor and Louise. Oh, my God. Isn't it brilliant? Yeah. Ollie's going to be delighted. Isn't he just? I'd best get that. Hello, kids and solicitors. I thought you'd forgotten all about me. No, just got busy in the salon. Can I have two pieces of chicken, please? And this is for you. Oh, thanks. It's a Cumberland sausage. Tell you don't need them. What was that? I'm just saying that he should get a move on, you know, open it. Yeah, come on. Hope you like it. Oh, yeah, it's a nice one. Kids, it's made for those greatest touch. You like it, then? I like it. I love it. Move on up. Used to box that all the time, you know. Yeah, me too. Well, uh, listen, can I have the money, please, before you two get into all our yesterdays again? <laughs> Sorry. Look, I better dash. I'm glad you like the CD. Look, um, you'll have to come and listen to us sometime. Can't wait. See ya. See ya. Hey, yeah, uh, listen, you'll have to come and listen to it sometime. This is one good prison, you know. Yeah, she's probably got one for her husband as well. She's not married. So she tells you. OK. What if she is? So you're admitting it, then? I'm not admitting anything. All I'm saying is, what if she is? So you go with a married woman? Could be quite exciting. Could be quite dangerous. All that ducking and diving probably turns it on. Yeah, and if her husband finds out, he'll probably turn your lights off. Sin, stop worrying, will you? Everything's fine. I'm just enjoying yourself. You ready? It's getting late. Just about. Don't forget Marcus's book. Oh, you hang on to that. Well, you should read it first. I've got the manuscript. Yeah, but the book's got some changes. Well, you don't want Ollie to see it, do you? I don't think that's even up for discussion at the moment, young lady. Marcus still thinks a lot about you, you know. Louise. He's mentioned it to me more than once. Do you still think about him? <sighs> I'm perfectly happy with my relationship with Ollie. Yeah, that doesn't stop you thinking about Marcus, does it? Let's go, shall we? Thanks. There were cards and flowers in the house, Lisa. Look, this proves it. But they haven't told you face to face? No, and what I want to know is why not? Well, I must admit, it all seems very strange. I thought they'd have mentioned something to me, at least. Yeah, well, they're obviously trying to keep it a secret from everyone, but most of all from me. Stuck over here in Chester out the way. There'll be a simple explanation, I'm sure. Yeah. Like two babies on the way, but which one will he want? Not this one. We don't know any of this. Yeah. It doesn't take a brain surgeon to work it out, does it? I'm just so surprised by all this. You and me both? I mean, all that stuff about Susanna not being able to have kids. I mean, that must have been lies. It couldn't have been. Susanna was devastated when the doctors told her. Yeah, which must have been putting it on. I can't believe that. So you saw the doctor's results yourself then, did you? No, but... No, exactly. I've been conned. <laughs> Kirsty's not feeling very well. I think she should go home. Yeah, OK. It's uh, not too busy out there, is it? Ta. Right, you Listen. We've got to work together, and I want us to stay mates. Truce? Yeah, truce. Good. <laughs> what do you think of these colours for the bar? Is this another one of your ideas? I don't like the uniforms. Everyone looks like garden gnomes. Mm, gee, thanks. So, big changes on the way. Well, if I'm honest, I'm not so sure about these colours. OK. Can I be honest? I know it sounds soft, but I apologise for what I've been if it offended you. Well, you can't help what you are. Yeah, but maybe it's time this sleeping land thing finally came to a stop. Why? Just because I wanted a one-night stand? When I was working in France, I slept with this fella's daughter. My usual thing, a one-night stand, and he pulls me to one side. I mean, I thought he was going to kill me. And he says, dead quiet like, casual sex is no good for the soul. <laughs> Oh, inside, I was laughing. I thought he was talking through his hat. And all this time, I've just been playing the field. But I've got to be honest, being with you, well... Is this a chat-up line? No. I'm my mother's life. 
he was right. After a while, you realise it's just sex, another conquest. And this is all very interesting, but why are you telling me? Well, we can all learn from other people's mistakes. Well, I hope you have. I'd better get back. Lovely Barbie weather, this. Yeah, as usual. Hey, this great granny's thing sounds right up my street. You shouldn't be thinking about work, Mum. Just enjoy your retirement. If you don't use it, you lose it, as they say, and that's exactly what I intend to do. See, Dad, not everyone does what you tell them. Nicky? No, Mum, I just don't think my dad should have the last word on this. Another time, he says. But the longer it goes on, the more chance there is a Davinia and the girls finding someone else to go with them. So why don't you take the doubt out of it all and tell him you're not going? Dad, even me nan thinks... I'll tell him what I think, Lam. Do you remember that time you wanted to go off to run on your bike with your mates and your dad was dead set against it? It was different then. Oh, why do parents always use that one? I've got to say this, Dad. It's not as bad as people make out these days. Listen, I read enough in the papers near from the lads on the sites. Yeah, I remember that spark, Mike Dillon. He went to Spain. He was with a different girl every night. It didn't happen in my day. Dad, have you ever heard of a fella called Casanova? He wasn't exactly brought up in Bootle a couple of years ago. Don't get lippy, Nicola. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of what my dad's argument is for me not going. Greg. She has 18. She's growing up, love. She's not going, all right. Oh, aren't I? That's enough, Nicola. No, Mum. I'm going straight down that passport office tomorrow to get the ball rolling, cos one way or another, I'll be in Ibiza. Sounds like she means it, son. I'll go and see her, eh? Well, don't be looking at me. I'm just an ordinary dad trying to bring his kids up the right way. What are you doing? This is what it's all about, isn't it? Eight months I've been living this life trusting those two. And for what? Money. Money to buy all these things. I mean, look at this. A year ago, I would have laughed if you'd have told me to put one of these on. Why? Because they look foolish, innit? And look at me now, I am a fool. Jackie, settle down. This isn't doing any good. I've got plans, Lisa. A leisure club, a new bar, and I can't do all that if I'm stuck with the kids. All of this is just speculation. You see, I believed your sister. All that upset when she was pretending that she was terrified in case I bonded with the baby, and all the time she was planning her own child. Why don't we just wait for them to get back from holiday and then we'll know exactly what the situation is? Lisa, will you just listen? She's not going to want this baby while she can have one of her own. Can't you understand? This is going to change my life. It's going to ruin it. A small car with a lot of room and a van with living space attached. Just two of the deals on wheels, coming up next on 4. Let's make it.
makes a change being able to get into the bathroom without having to plead with the girls to worry up. Oh, Nick, you won't be putting in an appearance, not till you've gone to work. She has got a right cob on with you. You reckon she'll still go on this holiday, even though I've said she can't? Well, she seems determined to. I don't know where she's going to get the money from, then. You think I should back down, don't you? I can't see what this is all achieving, apart from causing a load of trouble. Right, then. Not even you had that. As if I didn't have enough to worry about with Madam. My lad over here announces he's still swanning off to Amsterdam for the weekend, leaving me right in it. Well, I told you I was going on the stag night ages ago. Yeah, but seeing as the wedding was cancelled, I thought the stag night would have been as well. It seems a bit pointless having a stag night without a wedding. Especially as we're up to our eyes in work. I could really do with you here, not getting blind drunk with your cronies for no reason. It's our duty as Robbie's mates to help him get over, Trisha. Well, our Nicky saw him out with some blonde, and she seemed to be helping him over his heartbreak as well. You know, they're just good friends. And besides, we would have lost our deposit if I had to cancel the booking. I'd have boxed you off if it meant you staying home, giving me a hand. Well, it's too late now. I would have loved to stay home and work. But it looks like I'm going to have to go to Amsterdam instead. Instead of weighing me in for the deposit, why don't you give the cash to her, Nicky? I mean, she's going to need it if she's going away. She's not going anywhere. And I should make you stay home as well. Hey, one family feud at a time, please. <clears throat> I'll see you later, Mum. See you. I liked it better when the kids did as they were told. Oh, yeah, when was that? Cos I can't remember. <sighs> right, I'd better get over the road before Ollie's out with his stopwatch. Oh, right. Uh, do us a favour. At least try and think about letting Nicky go away. I mean, she's got a good head on her shoulders. We can't trust her. Yeah, we thought that about Jason and Katrina. Look what happened there. <sighs> See you later. Hey, hey. All right. You want chips for breakfast or something? <laughs> Not even your chips are that good. <laughs> so, what can I do for you, then? Well, I've come to make you an offer you can't refuse. Well, at least I hope you can't. Oh, yeah? I'm meant to be going to Dublin this weekend with my friend Sandra to see a concert. Something's come up and she can't make it. Well, I wondered if you fancied it. Dublin? Yeah, but the flight's this afternoon. Look, I know it's short notice, but if you can make it, it'd be a really good break. It's a Motown reunion concert. There's loads of big acts on, some really famous ones. <laughs> Sounds great. Doesn't give me much time to sort Leo and Gemma out, do I? Let's hope I can get them fixed up. You don't think I'm being a bit forward, do you, asking you to go away like this? Nah. I mean, it's not like we're teenagers or anything, is it? That's what I thought. I mean, we're getting on really well, aren't we? And a weekend away would be nice. <laughs> right, therefore, let me see if I can get Leo and Gemma sorted out. Great. Look, I'd better go. I don't want to be late for work, especially if there's a chance I'm going to have to leave early. All right, well, listen, um, I'll do my best and uh, I'll speak to you later. Great. Fingers crossed, eh? Yeah. See ya. See ya. Oh, right, eh? Where do you think you're going? I'm just going to go and visit Kylie. Really? Well, it's not your day for a visit. So you can't? Well, I'm just going to go and talk to Lindsay, try and sort a few things out. She's not going to pay you any money. So if that's what you're after, you're wasting your time. And the sooner you realise that and do one, the better. I think you should all realise that I'm not going anywhere unless I decide I want to. Well, is that right? Well, I've decided that you're not going anywhere near our house. So beat it! All right. But I'll only come back again. You can't stop me from seeing my daughter, unless you want to really ruin things for Lindsay. I really fancy going, you know. I mean, I've never been to Dublin, but... Well, ask Leo and Gemma. Well, Leo doesn't need babysitting, does he? So I can easily keep an eye on him. And Gemma can stay an extra night, and her mates should be made up. Oh, nice one, Sin. I'll give Serena's mama ring, make sure it's OK. I mean, I can't let an opportunity like this go, can I? Oh, no. <laughs> What's up with your gob? The price of chalk gone up? Nah. Just seen the ginger sketch. Yeah, is he still pestering yeah, Lindsay? Yeah, he hasn't shown any signs of letting up either. Oh, I don't know what sort of effect all this yeah, is going to have on her, you know. What do you mean? What if he won't slink his hook? What if she decides that the only way she can get him off her back is by doing one herself? No, she won't do that. She thinks too much of you and Jackie. Oh, I know, but Kylie means more. And if the pressure of him hanging around gets any worse, who knows what she'll do? Now, maybe a few years ago she'd have given up and run away, but... 
She's been through a lot since then. I reckon your Lindsay's a lot tougher than you think. Is that yeah, I suppose you might. Oh. Thanks very much. Yeah. What's all that about? I'll be back in the summer, so. That Pauline one from the hairdressers has invited them away for the weekend, just the two of them. Some story about her mate having to drop out at the last minute. Oh, why? And what do you think she's up to, like? I don't know, but something smells fishy, and it's not the cod. I reckon mm -hmm. someone's been edged out to mm -hmm. make room for me. I mean, one minute she's in here, ordering two lots of everything, and then the next thing, it's a romantic holiday for two going spare. Well, maybe whoever she right. was sharing her chips with didn't have his own business and a big flash car. Well, uh, just telling Jimmy about your trip to Dublin. Yeah, well, uh, it looks like it's on. Jim's all boxed off. Well, no wonder you're looking pleased with yourself. Dirty weekend away with a mucky hairdresser. Hey, it's not like that to me. Uh, I happen to like Pauline a lot. All right, you're only joking. It's hard lines on a mate not being able to go. Like, uh, I think we really can have a good time. Can't wait. <laughs> yes, mate? I've, um... Rice. What are you doing here? Just came to see my little girl. Good job, too. I don't think she should be in the front on her own. Yeah. Well, she only went to get some sand off the builders next door to play with. And I said she could. Yeah, last time you let her out of sight, she nearly ended up dead, didn't she? Right. Are you going to play in the garden like a good little girl, eh? There you go. Go on. Don't you dare question and look after my daughter. You don't know what I go through every time she's out of my sight. But it's something I have to put up with, otherwise I'd end up wrapping her up in cotton wool. All I'm saying is you should be a little bit more careful. I mean, you never know what might happen. I mean, what would you do if someone took her away from you? Someone tired of waiting for what he wants? You wouldn't. A little extended holiday with her dad might do Kylie some good. Might make you realise exactly how serious I am about getting this money. I told you I haven't got any money. I've made the sandcastle. Do you want to come and see it? Mummy and Daddy are talking. Go and play. Don't talk to her like that. Talk to her however I like. Oh, no, you won't. Now, come on, just get out! You better realise that I am not messing around here. I am deadly serious about getting this money, and I am getting fed up of waiting around. Think about what I could do to you if I really got impatient. And the way this is dragging on, that's not far off. And you really don't want things to get out of control. I'll let you think things over. But when I come back, you better have a plan about how you're going to get me my money. I'm waiting on now. Is it nearly ready? <sighs> Just about. Here's your number one, fan. Bobby rang before. He said to pick it up in a taxi on the way to the airport. Did he say what time? No, he wants you to give him a ring once you finish work. You want to start charging him secretarial fees? Must be great to be trusted enough to go away. I'll probably be in my thirties before I'm allowed to go on holiday with my mates. Doesn't look like she's ready to kiss and make up just yet, does it? Well, she won't, will she? Until I give in and let her go on holiday with Divinia and the others. Well, you may as well. She'll only go anyway. So what's the point of falling out over it? I don't think you can look after herself, and she'll have to turn for life, and I'd be there. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Home, sweet home. <laughs> Who's parked over our driveway? No, I bet it's something to do with the Shadwicks. Well, if it is, I am not having our property used as a temporary car park whilst we're away. Well, can't take away. It might not be anything to do with them. Well, I bet it has. Oh, no. Don't say that. I'm not in the mood. On a lovely holiday, I just want to go in, put the kettle on, and relax. Okay. Anything you want? Well, at least let me carry one of the cases. I'm pregnant, not disabled. <laughs> Jackie. So it is true, then. Uh, what are you doing here? And, uh... How did you get in? I still had the spare key. I wanted to be here when you got back to find out if what I did was true. And it sounds like it is. All right, son. Hiya. Where are you going? I haven't mentioned anything. Anything about what? Uh, I'm going to wait for the weekend to Dublin. You with? 
We're pulling him. You know the one I told you about? If you don't mind, like... It's not up to me, is it? How did you find out? Well, never mind that. How come one minute you definitely couldn't have children and then all of a sudden you're pregnant? Have you been having fertility treatments or something? No! Honestly, well, we couldn't believe it ourselves. When the doctor called me in, I... I was afraid she was going to tell me there was something seriously wrong with me. And then when she did tell us, well... Well, we thought there'd been some mistake. Yeah, well, my head's been in bits since I found out. We were just as surprised by all of this as you were. You've been using me as some kind of backup just in case you couldn't get pregnant yourself, haven't you? No, of course not. How could you think we'd do that? Well, what did you expect me to think when I read this? Look, just hang on a minute. Let's just calm down. Find out what's been going on round here. Hi. Hang on. You're ready, then? Yeah, just got me stuff. There you go, love. OK. So you're all ready for the off, then? Yeah. It was hard lines about your mate, wasn't it, uh, Miss Nell, the way she did? Yeah, she's got that bug that's going around. Everyone's had it, haven't they? Don't mind me whisking your dad off, do you? No, of course he doesn't. Anyway, we're going to have a cracking time, aren't we? I'll like, get a few videos out, get burgers, chips, crisps, the lot. Yeah, might even have a few lagers. Hey, I heard that. You two better behave yourselves. Same goes for you, sir. Uh, right, we'd better be off. Look, uh, I'll give you a ring tonight with the hotel number in case you need to get hold of me and um, see you Sunday. Uh, we'll have a good time, won't you? We will. Bye. ta -ra. I haven't seen me dad that excited in ages. Lucky for him, Pauline's mate, that's a dropout. Well, now that you can have children yourself, don't you wish you'd have waited and said to go ahead with the surrogacy? Not at all. No, we talked it through on holiday and, well, we don't have any regrets whatsoever. Does uh, anyone else know? Well, like I said, I think it's just the Shadwicks. <sighs> Marvellous. And, erm, um, well, I asked Lisa if she knew anything about it. Oh, Lisa knows. Oh, well, I'm just looking forward to telling her myself. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I had to ask her. I mean, what else could I do? I didn't know what was going on. I was really confused. Well, now you can just relax, because you don't have anything to worry about. D are you sure? I mean, I'm a bit stuck, if you know. Where sure? I am. Um, I haven't congratulated you yet. Oh, we really want you to be pleased for us. We're overjoyed at all of this. And we're really looking forward to having both of our children. I am, honestly. Right, well, I'd better get going. <laughs> we're only sorry that we didn't get the chance to tell you ourselves. Yeah, well, it's done now. <laughs> oh. I feel like I'm on the run, having to do all this sneaking round, hiring cars and wearing disguises. Oh, I only wish you hadn't had to have gone through all of this. <sighs> yeah, well. Right, well, I better go. See ya. <laughs> Bye. 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 Well, it's not the welcome home we expected. Oh, why did she have to find out like this? Oh, why did I leave that car in those flowers? <sighs> It's all your fault, making us late that morning before we went on uh, holiday. You can hardly blame me. <laughs> Look, if the Shadwicks haven't helped themselves to our property, your pregnancy would still be a secret. Oh, Julia. <sighs> if Julia read the card when she threw the flowers out, then the whole neighbourhood will know by now. But surely she keep news like that to herself. You finished playing, love? I haven't even started yet. What are you doing here? If my dad was here, he'd kill you. Yeah, but you're on your own. Just go, will you? You're wasting your time, cos you're not getting anything out of me. You keep saying you're desperate to see the back of me, but you're not prepared to do anything about it. I think deep down you want me to stick around. Oh, I know you're mad. You must be sick in here if you think I could want you anywhere near me and Kylie. I'm not talking about Kylie. I'm talking about you. There must be a part of you that misses what we had. Oh, don't kid yourself. Oh, that Peter's dead boring. I mean, you must be lacking something. You must admit, when we first got married, we couldn't keep our hands off each other. We all wake up after a bad dream. You know, there could be another solution to all of this. 
You know, we could uh, come to some sort of arrangement if you haven't got the money to pay me. Don't even think about it. I know you might enjoy it. What? You raping me again? It wasn't rape. We were married. I just used a bit of force, that's all. And don't say you didn't enjoy it, because I know you did. If you're going to try and rape me again, you'll have a fight on your hands. Because I'm not the pushover I was back then. This time, you'll have to kill me. Only me, love. Hey, you should see all the bargains I got from the market. Pens, pencils, the lot. All right, Kelly, I'm going now, sweetheart. What did I say about you coming here? It's all right, Dad. He's going now. And maybe soon I'll be able to take you to Formby Beach and we can make proper sandcastles, eh? Great! <laughs> all right, I'll see you soon, then. Bye-bye. Remember to keep a close eye on Kylie. You don't want to let her out of your sight. Just get out. <sighs> What's he been saying? Just the usual rubbish. Nothing I haven't heard before. Well, listen, I'm Joan at the chippy. I'll, um... Stay here if you think he's going to come back. It's all right. I can handle him. <sighs> Hiya. Hiya, babe. Haven't you gone yet? What does it look like? Robbie's on his way around for him in a cab. Better get a move on that. Hello. Hiya, love. Yeah, hang on. Oh, yeah. No, not yet. Yeah, I am still going. Yeah, I'm gonna really miss you too. Look, I can't let Robbie down. No. Helping the number one song get ready no. for his holiday, eh? Hang on, Nick, I want a word. What now? Have you worked out a curfew for me or something? No. I've decided you can go on this holiday. Yeah. Well, I should think so or not. No. Nicky? And I'll lend you the money to pay for it. Really? As long as you get a job when you come home so you can pay me back. Oh, thanks, Dad. I knew you'd see sense. Yeah, well, just make sure I don't regret it. Hey, thought he was the worst father in the world. I never said that, did I? Right, I'm jumping in the bath. Do you want me to run it for you? No, you're all right. I've said I'll pay for the holiday. You don't have to suck up. I'm not. Yeah. I'm just offering to help me lovely yeah, Dad. Oof. Oh, I'll turn it in, Nick. We'll change his mind. <sighs> Look, see, I'm going and that's it. Look, I'm already late as it is. This will have to wait until I get back. Don't say that. All right, then, be like that. Look, I'm gonna have to go. I'll see you on Sunday. In the doghouse, son? Anyone to think we were married? You can't expect her to be happy. You're going to Amsterdam on the Raz with your mates. No, I don't see why not. And anyway, she's got no say in the matter. I'm going, and that's an end to it. <laughs> Stay to you. Letting her know who's boss, eh, son? That'll soon change when you get married. <laughs> and you can keep quiet, no? If it wasn't for me, my dad wouldn't be letting you go on this holiday. Put a good word in for you this morning. Oh, thanks. But he would let me go in the end anyway. So, what's Katrina's problem? Oh, she thinks I'm deserting her. You know, so soon after the abortion and that. It was weeks ago and this has been arranged for ages. Can't just drop out now. You mean you don't want to? Well, yeah. But it's only for the weekend. You don't think I'm out of order, do you, Nick? I don't know. I don't know how she's feeling. I haven't just had an abortion, have I? But I bet she's not doing it just to spoil your fun. Oh, that kills. Your rib's still giving you jip? Yeah, not half. I haven't heard any more from the business about this accident, or what? Uh, I've been thinking about that, you know. What if it wasn't an accident? Oh, what is it with you and all these conspiracy theories all of a sudden? Well, it just seems a bit weird that someone would go for me and I'd just get off like I'll that. Oh, get out of it. It was probably someone who had too much to drink, that's all. I thought it was someone who had it in for me. Simba, you're getting paranoid. You want to relax? Come, Adley. Go get a video. Yeah. Look, I know you're a sensible girl, but you wouldn't blame us for worrying. I mean, look what happened to Jason and Katrina. Oh, hey, Mum, you don't think I'm going to come back from holiday pregnant to some lad, do you? No, but I just think you should be careful, that's all. It's all right, cos me and Davinia have gone halves in this big box of condoms. It's going to be a totally safe sex holiday, and we thought we'd get them before we left in case we copped off in the airport. <laughs> look, stop pulling me like you. This is serious. Your dad wants me to have a word with you. He's a bit worried about you going away on your own. There's no need. I will be fine. And if, and it's a big if, I meet someone that I like and it feels right, I'll be sensible. I always am, so don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, <coughs> oh, Jason must have caught his plane or he'd have been back by now. They're all probably drunk by now on Juicy Free. 
Did you have a word with him about safe sex and condoms? Or is that just for us girls? What exactly did you say to me? What did you tell me to say to me? I didn't say anything about condoms and that. I meant tell her to be careful about mixing the drinks. Don't do it, not encourage you to get up to all kinds. Oh, get real, Greg. They're virtually adults. Probably more clues up than we ever were. I'm better supplied. Though 97% safety still isn't as good as 100% safety guaranteed by keeping your kecks on. Look, it went on when we were teenagers. It'll always go on. We just hope our kids are more sensible and learn from their mistakes. Comedy kicks off in a moment with friends and Joey's new girlfriend's really pushing Chandler's buttons. Watch him slowly come undone next on four. Hey, Sim, have I had a good weekend or what? The music was superb. I tell you what, I'm stiff all over. Oh, yeah. Hey, from dancing. Even managed a few backflips, you know what I mean? <laughs> so the kid's okay? Yeah, yeah, great. What happened then? Who's gonna pick us up from the airport? Yeah, sorry, mate. Um, I just didn't feel like going out, you know. What's happening? Well, before you start panicking, Leo's fine, okay? Leo? Why? What's been going on, Sim? I had another run in with the killer car maniac, only this time. Leo was with me. Come in and have a cup, eh? Hi. A little bit early for the start of term. It's me induction day, isn't it? Can I go in, get all my curriculum stuff sorted and that? John, from your sons, Anthony, You OK? Yeah, fine. Just wish things with Gaddy weren't so complicated. Oh, well, they wouldn't be so complicated, would they? If he was out of your life. How do you mean, out of my life? I mean, he should take the hint and do one. He knows he's not wanted round here. And we know how upsetting it is for our Kylie having him hanging around, getting everyone aggravated all the time. Look, love, all I'm saying is you could pick things up and get on with your life if he wasn't around to mess things up for you. Yeah, I know what you mean. So, wish me luck, eh, kid? Yeah, you don't need luck. You've done really well to get where you are, Dad, and we're dead proud of you. You just go and show them what you're made of. Nice one. Thanks for that, kid. Just wish I'd done it 20 years ago. Hey, and you remember what I said about you and Gary. The sooner he is out of your life for good, the better. So did they try and knock you both down? No, we were in the van, right? Minding our own business. And then the next thing, out of nowhere, comes this car and tries to force us off the road. You've got the police involved, though. Well, what would I tell them? I never got sight of the driver. I was too busy trying to keep the van on the road. Anyway, your Leo was sound, your dead calm, and everything, making sure that I was fit to drive and that. And he's definitely not hurt? No, he's fine, honest to God. Give me a ring when we get to the chippy. Listen, Mick, I've told him I don't want him coming out with me again, you know. Why not? Well, why do you think? Whoever it is that's trying to get me, he's not going to rest until I'm lying across a pavement somewhere. Hey, don't be talking like that, Sin. It's probably just coincidence. We won't get cut up. It happens, doesn't it? No way. If you'd have been there and seen what happened, you'd know it was no coincidence. Well, someone's out to get me. Hi, 
Hey, love. Mum, can I go to kill Mum Bay with Sean and Ainsley? How about saying hello first? That's what civilised people do. Oh, go on. I've said you'll let me go. It's a bit late to be going out for the day. It's off for the dates for the week, in the caravan. Oh, Sean's mum and dad will be there, so it's not so we're going to get up to anything. Leave that one, I say. Oh, go on, Mum. I mean, Dad's always working and you start on your new job. I have a great time stuck here, aren't I? All oh, right, I get the message. But it isn't just down to me. I'll have to ask your Dad, OK? Can I go and get some of my stuff packed? No, I haven't said you can go, you. <sighs> Since when have you had a mobile? It's perk of the job, so I can be contacted in an emergency. I'll answer that. Hello? Hi, love. Can you hear me? Of course I can. You're only sat there. No, on the phone. Oh, yeah, no problem. No, I just wanted to see how it was working. Now, about this week away, if you want to stand any chance with your dad, you could start by tidying up your room. How oh, do we have to? Oh, she wants to go away on holiday. I've got work to do here. Why are we being so quiet? Jackie's having a nap. Oh, right. Oh, I was hoping she'd gone shopping or something. Give us a chance to talk. We should be all right for a little while yet. She normally manages to get half an hour. Oh, you've been so good to her. How's she been? Well, she started getting really tired this last week or so. Oh, I remember that feeling. I used to get exhausted when I was carrying Matthew. I don't think your news has helped her to relax, though. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, and that's why I've come, to reassure her that we still want everything to go as we planned. If things were as well planned as you keep saying, then you wouldn't be in the position you're in now. I haven't come to argue, Lisa. Max and I are really solid at the moment. We talk about everything. We even decided not to go for the new house so we can be sure we won't overstretch ourselves. I've been through the most... the most extraordinary time of my life recently, and I need encouragement and support, not people attacking me. Yes, see you soon. You sure you're up to this? Yeah. Just keep me on light duties, I'll be fine. I'm just a bit bruised and sore, that's all. Have we not known where this wound up? I mean, usually quite laid back. Yeah, well, I'll be fine. Let's just get on, eh? Hiya. All right, Lindsay. Hiya. How you doing? Oh, OK, you know. I think you sound too convinced. Just a few things niggling me. Hello. Anything I can help you? Just have a Personal. Me and Gary. Access to Carly, all that kind of Hello. stuff. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound noisy. No one was it? Well, he didn't say anything, so I don't know. Why do I get the feeling you two have been planning something? Well, Emily's got the chance for a week in North Wales. To John Nancy and her mum and dad. That stupid brother. And what have you said? I've said it's up to you. Oh, thanks, love. This in their caravan, is it? Yeah, it's only for a week. Can I go? I thought you had a race meet next week. I have, but it's no big deal. Are you sure, love? You work really hard at your running this year. Honest, it's more like a fun run thing, really. Well, I've got a conference that day, so if she goes on holiday, there'll be no problem. Oh, I'll go on, Dad. Well, let's find out what Sean's mum and dad think first, eh? Can we phone them on the mobile? I've told you, it's only for official union business. Oh, yeah, I bet the union top dogs use them for private calls all the time. Well, I'm not. It's my members who pay the union bills. Be like robbing them, using it to phone news law. Yeah, but in emergencies, though. Yeah, what's well, different? So you'll be able to get in touch next time you won't be home to cook the tea. Mm. Come on, let's go over and phone now. Got to go to work. And I'll get on here, in and the dosh for everyone else to go off and join themselves. You do it so well. Uh, that's right, yeah. <clears throat> Martin James. But everyone calls you Jimmy. I remember from the interview. Karen Dalton, Head of History. Yeah, hi. Sorry I'm late. I tried to get into my office, but they're, they're resealing the floor outside it, so we can't meet in there, I'm afraid. Unless you're any good at shinnying up drain pipes and climbing in windows. Uh, no, not quite my scene, that. <clears throat> well, once I've shown you around, we're going to have to find somewhere we can park ourselves. We might end up sitting outside. Oh, well, wherever, you know, whatever you think. So this is your first full-time appointment, yeah? Yeah, I know it's going to take a bit of time for me to settle in, but, uh, well, they're only kids in the end. <laughs> they don't bite, do they? Well, most of them don't. Yeah, this place is so quiet without the kids. We get to quite like it like this. 
Oh, by the way, just so you know, the head spoke very highly of you after your interview. And so did I. We both thought you'd be a breath of fresh air around the place. For the staff as much as for the kids. And that's high praise from Thornton. Takes a lot to get him excited about anything. Unless it's getting his name in the paper. Or his photo even better. I was still second choice there, wasn't I? Oh, only with the old guard on the governors. I had you down as number one choice on my list. Oh, right. So, have you got a favourite historical period? Or one that you specialise in? Well, maybe not a period as such. More like, um... Well, whose eyes are we supposed to see history through? You know, like kings and queens or them at the bottom of the heap. They're the people I'm interested in. What history was like for them. Well, you're on a winner here, then, with most of the kids in this school. They know all about being at the bottom of the heap. Come on, let's start showing you around. Do you mind me staying on at yours a bit longer? No, of course not. It's great having the company. You know, the kids see you like one of the family. Cheers, mate. I appreciate that. Listen, um, I was trying to get a short let on the house, you know, make some extra cash. That way I'd be able to throw a little bit more into the housekeeping, you know. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea, especially at the moment. I mean, you don't want to go over there by yourself, do you? <sighs> you OK, mate? Yeah, it's just feeling easy a bit, you know. Look, when I phoned our Leo, OK, he said that he was all right after this main F tried to run you off the road, but uh, he also said that you were really shaken up. He didn't tell me it took ten minutes to sort you, sir. I just wanted to make sure I was OK to drive, that's all. <sighs> if you hadn't a gun, now. If I hadn't been messing about in Dublin, then you wouldn't have been out with Leo in the first place, and none of this would have happened. Oh, come on, Mick. You can't blame yourself just because someone's got it in for me. Look, Sam, I've got no reason to doubt you. But when it comes down to it, who would want to do something like that to you, mate? I mean, yeah, everybody's mate. It's just got to be a run of bad luck, that's all. Yeah, I suppose so. And on top of that, you've had a fright earlier in the year. Your imagination's running away with itself. Lindsay! Lindsay the Friar! You're going deaf or something. I'm sorry, Mick. I was somewhere else then. You've got to be careful, you know, Linz. Whole place will go up in flames oh, if you let it get too right. hot. It won't happen again, Mick. I'm sorry. It'll take a bit of time to get on top of this slot. It's just all the usual curriculum stuff, schemes of work and so on. The main thing is to have your first month's lesson plans really sus before you start. Because, believe me, it'll fly by. Well, that's one thing I got right on my college course. Burning the old midnight oil. Plays havoc with the old beauty sleep, doesn't it? <laughs> and not that I'm saying it as with you or anything like. I just meant for me, you know. Are you up to speed with the way the students are assessed now? All the project work and coursework stuff? Yeah. You have to really get them into the idea of putting a lot of effort in from day one. <sighs> Well, from what I've heard about the Ofsted report, doesn't sound as if there's been much cracking of the whip going on. I don't know what happened here. Je it wasn't that long ago this was a fairly decent school, in fairly reasonable condition. They're kind of out of nowhere. It's all in the papers. Problem school. Teachers are leaving by the dozen. <laughs> no one's repainting the toilets anymore. It's almost as if the school itself was just losing heart. Sounds like I'm in for a rough ride if there's loads of teachers got off. I wouldn't worry about it. You'll cope. Do you reckon? Believe me, I've seen a lot of teachers come and go in this school, and I can normally tell within five minutes whether they'll survive or not. You'll do OK. I'm not being hypercritical here. I just want to know how you think you're going to manage. I know what it must seem like to you, but you're not the one living through this. I know, the more pregnant I get, the harder it will be to cope with Jackie's baby. Um, shouldn't I be included in this discussion? Hi! No, no, it's not a discussion. We were just chatting. Well, not quite just chatting. That sounds ominous. No, no, not at all. Lisa was just trying to put me into a panic about me coping with the baby and being pregnant at the same time. I'm worried Susanna's going to find that harder than she wants to admit. I'm trying to persuade her to think of alternative ways of handling the whole thing. Like me being left holding the baby. I haven't made any suggestions at all. I'm concerned like anybody would be under these circumstances. I want you to come through this strong and healthy and happy. But are you physically up to it? That's all I'm asking. And if you're not, what are you going to do about it? 
Now you both need to prepare yourselves for the worst that might happen. Not just cross your fingers and blindly assume that everything is going to turn out perfect. Greg, does this suit look OK? It's fine, you look great. I just don't want to get it wrong on my first day. Just be yourself. It's a long time since trade union reps wore cloth caps and mufflers. Anyway, you look more like a boss in your flash car. Oh, well, no, it's that new. I'm scared to sit on the seat. Anyway, I'm going to make a move. Colin, I think, got lost. Who's Colin? Colin taken over from. Nice bloke he is. Survivor of a thousand industrial disputes. Yeah, well, he would be the survivor, wouldn't he? Working for the union. I wonder how many of them disputes he's let go of. Waving bye-bye while the workers went floating off down the Swanee. No, he's all right from what I've heard. He's got a good reputation for negotiating decent redundancy payoffs. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Never mind judging him how many jobs he's saved. Give him a clap for helping management close places down. Oh, where? Did you get all the shans, Mum? Oh, yeah. That came for our Emily's to go. So I've said, yeah, she's in there packing her stuff now. So it'll just be the two of us for a few days, whenever our Jason's out? Yeah, God knows what we're going to do with all the space. I can make a few suggestions. Mm -hmm, like tile in the bathroom. That wasn't exactly what I had in mind. So, uh, you're nervous first day and all that? Huh? Yeah, sort of. I just want to make sure that I do some good for people. Anyway, we've had new labour, new deals. Now it's time for new Margie Shadwell. Let's just hope I can live up to people's expectations of me. You will. Have a good one. Yeah. Is there anything else you need to know? Um, I don't think so. We've pretty much covered everything, haven't we? I'm bound to have forgotten something. <sighs> Martha, you lift anywhere? Uh, no, you're OK. I'm pretty local as it goes. So. Do you reckon I'll fit in, then? I don't see why not. I think being on the mature side will help. I feel sorry for the 22-year-olds coming straight out of college. They get eaten alive sometimes. So, um, uh, not too old, then? Of course not. You obviously started your teacher training quite late. Do you mind me asking what made you change direction in your life? You mean besides the money and the holidays? Well, I was just wondering whether you got into teaching. You know, because you thought you can change the world. It sounds like you don't rate that idea very highly. Not after doing it for 16 years. All you can do is be yourself and hope that some of your ideas and values rub off on the kids you teach. There's a few, you know, won't last five minutes out in the real world. And then there's the others that you really have high hopes for and you send them off out on their own. Then a few years later, you find out that they're doing OK. You know, kids of their own, a little house and a job. Or you see it in the paper that one of them's done something good with their lives. That's when you get a buzz. That's when the payoff comes. And you can't ask for better than that, can you? No. I suppose all I'm saying is just be realistic about what you can achieve. And if you think you're falling short, it's probably because you set your sights too high in the first place. I'm not saying you should be dumbing down your expectations. I'm just saying be realistic. I know all about expectations. We had a bright spark of a lad 25 years ago. Little Jimmy. We took it for granted that he'd get on OK in life. I mean, he was never going to be an Einstein, anything like that. But, well, he could have made something of his life. We always thought that. But he didn't. Because no matter what expectations we had of him, they were like nothing once the smack got into his system. You know, eating away at his brain, eating away at his willpower, making him rob his family to buy the stuff. So I know all about being realistic when it comes to kids. Little Jimmy died nearly two years ago. I wanted to teach so I could pay me dues for having let him down, you know. So hopefully I can give a few other little Jimmies, you know, someone to look up to and respect before life starts to eat away at their brains, their willpower, their self-confidence. Was he your only child? No, we've got two more. A girl, Lindsay. Kept us sane knowing that we've got one that can get through life the right way. 
course she's had her moments, but, uh, well, we all do, don't we? But she's in control of her life now, and that's the important thing. And she's got a lovely little girl, the light of our lives, along with our youngster. He's still only a babe, really. 13 months old, he is. Oh, wow. He's come along very late in the day. Yeah. Little William gets me head up when I'm feeling down. You know the way little ones are. <laughs> well, you just know, don't you, eh? They're what it's all about. They're the future. That's what you need in this job. Passion and vision. You won't last without either. It's nice to have you on the team, Martin. Jimmy. To be friends. Sorry. <laughs> Look forward to working with you. Jimmy. Well, let's just hope I can do some good, eh? That's all I want to be able to say at the end of the day, that I've done my best and tried hard. And that I've got through to the kids. I mean, life's going to be hard enough for them as it is, without being losers before they start. Hey, you'd have loved the music, sir. Everywhere you went, it was non-stop. Oh, Gina Washington, Otis, Sam and Dave. Is that your dirty weekends in Dublin? Hey, it's all weekend, if you don't mind. Yeah. So did this Pauline one have piped music into her room as well? You know we shared a room. Not well, separate beds, though, I hope. It's not my fault it was a double, not a twin. I didn't book her. Oh, I bet you didn't complain, though, did you? We do. <laughs> hey, this Pauline one says that her mate had to drop out so that Mick could go. Now, you wouldn't book a double room for you and your mate, would you? No, a twin. Yeah, I mean, you'd only book a double room for you and your fella, wouldn't you? I thought you two were going home anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You walking round? No, I've uh, booked a taxi to the doctor's. Taxi? You lazy article. Well, just because of me like that, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't think. Right, I'll get off then. Hey, and don't forget, if Gary keeps missing your boat, you've got to be strong with him. It's the only way when somebody's bullying your limbs. Stand up to him. Yeah, and hopefully I won't have to worry about him for much longer. See ya. Yeah, ta-da, Linz. You want to go to the taxi? I thought the doctor wanted you to exercise the leg. Yeah, I know. Oh, I just didn't want to walk home from here, you know, in case, well, in case the maniac went for me again. Look, son, you can't let it get you like this. Well, they're already ass, all right? I mean, I'm scared of setting foot outside the house. I'm scared of crossing the road when I go home from here every night. Someone's trying to run me down, Mick. For whatever reason, someone's trying to kill me. From talking to Jackie over the last few days, I know how uneasy she's feeling about you being pregnant and how vulnerable that makes her feel. You really need to be open with each other and honest. But we have been honest with her. <laughs> she knows I'm pregnant. OK, Jackie found out in an unfortunate manner, but we were going to tell her. And anyway, <laughs> so what? It hasn't changed our thinking about Jackie's pregnancy. We still want to take the baby. We want to love it and nurture it just as much as the one that's inside me. So what's the problem? Well, it's not so much a problem. It's feelings and all those mad things that go running through my head when I wake up in the middle of the night. And that's happening pretty regular these days. I mean, I can't remember when I last had a full night's sleep. We've talked, right? Not behind your back, but more like flatmates, because, well, that's what we've become. By default, we know. But things just come out. Simple things, insecurities, you know. Oh, uh, like what? Well, for a start, like, ever since the accident, whether you knew there might be a chance that you could have another child yourself, but that the odds were stacked against you, so... So you used Jackie as a kind of way to hedge your bets just in case you failed yourself. You don't really believe I could be so two-faced and callous. Oh, please. Look, nobody's accusing you of doing it. It's just all the stuff that goes round in your head as a possible. Well, you two just listen to me, OK? Because I am really hurt by what you're suggesting. Really hurt. Do you really believe that we would have gone through all of this if there was the tiniest chance in the world that I could get pregnant and have a baby all of my own? Well, do you? Hello, um, Mrs Finnegan, please. It's Lindsay Corkill. She, she knows me through body crafts. <laughs> I am on my way. <laughs> right, I'm going to get a quick shower before getting down to business and waking through this slot before the term starts. Can't wait to tell your mother how well it went. Yes, yeah, she'll be made up, Em. Um, she's only gone down the shop. She'll be back soon. I've got to teach the Normans my first term. 
I said to them, hey, the only Normans I know are Norman Vaughan, ooh, dodgy, and Norman Wisdom. Mr Grimsdale! Oh, Mr Grimsdale! Oh, hello, Mrs Finnegan. It's Lindsay Corkill. I need to see you. That problem I had, it still needs to be sorted out. Yeah, yeah, that's right, my husband, Gary. I need to see you about getting them out of my life. Now, climbing Everest means subjecting the body to incredible stress. And next on 4, Equinox reveals just what happens when the brain has to try and function in thin air. Bit. New job, new image. Why? What's the job? Full-time union official. Union? Didn't think there'd be much call for your lot these days. Well, if you've got a couple of hours to spare later on, I'll tell you exactly why we need them. I don't like some washing me air. Anyway, does the car go with the job? Yeah, sure does. So this is where all the members' pension funds are going, eh? Hey, if I was a sensitive soul, you could hurt me saying things like that. And you're off to some high-powered meeting, are you? <laughs> yeah, factory and speak. Still got a couple of kids up the chimneys. Oh, well, as long as they're paying the going rate, who cares? <laughs> right, I'm up. Oh, listen, um, could you have a word with your Greg and ask him to come round and have a look at my roof later on? I've got a couple of slates that need resetting, you know. Oh, yeah, got all those little jobs done before the winter gets here. Well, hopefully I won't be here in the winter. I'm open to let the place out, you know. Yeah, don't be letting it out to any scallies. No, don't worry. I'm only going to advertise in Cheshire Life. <laughs> See you, sir. See ya. I've had the scan. Oh. Buy some maternity wear. <laughs> oh. Are you worried about the scan? Oh, no. I can't wait to see its little body up on the screen. So good seeing Jackie's scan. This will be doubly special. Afternoon, Lindsay. Hiya. Well, you could have worn a tracksuit and looked at least a bit inconspicuous. I don't wear them. The Italians think we're a right load of scruffs, wearing tracksuits all over the place. Going shopping, picking the kids up from school. <laughs> Bless your weird, eh? <sighs> so, what is it this time? It's a bit private. It's very private. Why did I get the feeling that if I ever heard from you again, it would involve your ex-husband? Probably because I've got sucker written across my face. Don't put yourself down, love. There's men out there who'll make a much better job of that than you. I know. Everyone needs at least 20 minutes hard exercise a day. Is this a sales pitch for the membership? <laughs> Why don't you go and see Jeanette on reception? Tell her you'll be joining me for a manicure or a massage or something. Um, well, you're not in a rush, are you? No, but... Lindsay, you've got stress written all over you. It'll be private. Very private. Yeah, but I can't tell you anything till I know something. Look, I'll call later. Yeah, bye. <coughs> right. Kimmins Cakes. All the latest in food technology, fantastic hygiene, but their attitude to the workforce is Victorian. I suppose they think they can afford to, but 90% of the workforce being women. Oh, come on, Marguerite. What? 
Well, let's not get distracted by gender studies. It's about workers and bosses. Who happen to be male bosses and female workers? <sighs> Mobile phones. Stop me getting on with anything. Best thing is, you can turn them off. What if it's important? No, it's the office number. My phone Sandra when we're finished here. Look, there's nothing complicated about the workplace. Bosses, whatever gender, want the work done for as little as possible. Now, that is always your starting point. Colin, I have been a shop steward for four years, you know. Yeah, all right, but I didn't mean to patronise you. I don't want us falling out on our first day. But as long as there's still women getting paid less than men for doing the same job, then I can't get on to all this workers and bosses business. They still treat us differently. Clients to you any minute. Thanks. Oh, and um, Mike Dixon's been on the phone for you. Our pensions and insurance wants to come in and see you. Oh, does he? Thanks. So, how are you? London was great. A lot of interest in the book, not just from a uh, popular media point of view, but also a few of the not so stuffy academics. Look, I'm going to be very busy. That's okay. I wanted to see you as soon as I got back. I've got to share my good news and views with someone, haven't I? I thought you were using Louise for that. Well, I love her enthusiasm, but I still value your opinion on things. Really? Yes. For you. Oh, thanks. Well, come on, open it. Why are you giving me this? Well, it's the uh, original one. And when we first met and I gave it to you, you, you said you'd keep it forever. Well, we say all sorts of things when we're young. Well, I didn't expect it to be sent back to the prison in an anonymous envelope without even so much as a compliment slip. Thank you, Marcus, but I don't want it. Eleanor, it's been following me round in my brown envelope for the last 18 years. Your brown envelope? Your necklace? It's yours. I'll put it on you. But, Marcus, I don't want it. But just stay away, OK? I read the letter you first sent me when I gave it to you. You wrote about our passion and commitment to each other. And did I write about my immaturity? I was barely 18, for heaven's sake. You sakes. made a promise to wear it. But why are you keeping these things? The letters, the necklace? Um, Mrs Mary Feeney's here for you. Thanks. Oh, and I was delighted to hear you've been reading my book. Yeah, Louise told me. Did you like the, uh, dedication? Look, I have to see a client. Oh, wait outside. There's a uh, couple of things I need to discuss about my book launch. No, I need to see you. Right away. Something bad's going on, and I think you should know about it. Bar Brookie, I'll see you in there. Well, I'll just wait in there for you. Good. It's important. How do you think it went? Well, apart from coming across like Rosie the Riveter, big beacon on your head saying, I'm a tough woman, don't mess with me, not too bad. Well, it winds me up. I was asking the questions and you're giving the answers back to you, like it was your PA in some fancy suit. You nearly lost it. He was lucky he didn't get his peppermint tea in his lap. There's no way I'm having anyone talking down to me just because I'm wearing a skirt. Don't get distracted. I didn't. You did. The issue in there was some Thatcherite no-strike deal, and you started thinking with your hormones. Colin, they were ignoring me. Tough. <laughs> If you think personal, you end up losing your focus and arguing about the wrong things. But it's important to me. Yeah, but the workers only want good, strong union representation. Which is what I'll give them. Yeah, well, great. But they don't care if the steward wears what, knickers or underpants, or both, for that matter. 
Yeah? So when you're negotiating, leave the gender politics in your handbag, please. Right, lunch. Thank you, Mrs Feeney. We'll be in touch. Katie's gone for sandwiches for lunch. Yes, I know. Here, let me. Thanks. You smell beautiful, as you always do, of course. Look, what are you still doing here? My publisher is having a party next week for his uh, stable and uh, wants to know who's going to be on my guest list. Casey's got my diary. Well, will uh, Ollie be coming? No, he won't. He'll be in... Where? He'll be in Tring at a book fair. Well, that's not too far for him to make it back. If you really wanted him there. I didn't realise the choice was mine. So, do I take it you'll be there? Like I say, I'll have to check my diary. Mm. Well, Louise would love to have us both there together. Right, I'm off. Oh, and I'm glad you accepted the necklace. What? Well, it was on the desk when I left, so I uh, presume it's now secreted somewhere on your person. Bye. You don't look very relaxed. I'm OK. Can you just give us 10, please? I'm not sure what I want you to do, but last time you said you were going to beat him up. Yeah, <laughs> until your boyfriend got in the way. Yeah, he gets arrested and slime balls still around, clinging on like a bad smell. Was Gary your first real boyfriend? Well, serious one, yeah. And I bet you thought you loved each other, but then you grew up. You heard the story before, have you? Oh, I've lived it, love. I did the same thing, only the fella's name was Derek. Of course, I couldn't have children, so it all went downhill. We were just two kids living in a bedsit. No hopers, with no vision, just dreams of our own council house. So how come all this then? Alistair came along. I was working in a bar and he was doing the door with his obnoxious brother, Colin. <sighs> oh, I am. <laughs> Now, there's someone who should have been put in a sack and chucked in the Clyde while he was still in short trousers. Mm. But Alistair, he saw something in me that I didn't. What? Ambition, I suppose. Before I met him, Ambition was running my own catalogue with half a dozen customers who paid on time. So what about Derek? Oh, I chucked him. Caught on a bit quicker than you. Kind of made Alistair feel good. You know, the knight in shining arm a bit. I know someone like that. Barry Grant. Why isn't he helping you sort out Gary? Because I don't want him involved. I'm past all that. But look at where you are, trying to sort it out on your own. You're coming here and asking us to give Gary a hiding again. But then ask yourself, will it really make any difference? But that's it, though. I think I've gone past that stage. What? I just can't take any more of it from Gary. He's, he's sucking the life out of me. And I just don't think giving him a slap is going to make a difference. Oh? I think... I think I want him out the way. For good. Talking about plans for bringing him home. What? Well, not for a while, but his physio and OT seems to be gearing up that way. Which means we'll have to find somewhere of our own. Anyway, it wasn't Ben you wanted to talk to me about, was it? No. So what's Tim up to these days? Oh, you know him, here and there. He's nearly 18 now, coming and going as a man. When did you last see him? What's all this about? I stepped off the pavement today and he nearly ran me over. What? 
Carmel. He tried to kill me. Max! Hi. Oh, Jackie, you've got good news? Oh, more than good news. I've got a photo of our baby. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> oh, look at it, Max. Isn't it wonderful? Yes, it's fantastic. Oh, I wish you'd seen it. It was just, it was just sort of there, sort of floating, like in slow motion, a little heartbeat and... Oh, a baby, Max. <laughs> One of our babies. Oh, well, that's what I was thinking as I left the clinic. I mean, how am I really going to manage? What do you mean? Well, it's just going to be so difficult with two children. Oh, we'll manage. Listen, I mean it. I know it'll be hard, but we'll do it. Well, we'll have to. Yes. We can always reassess the situation once they've started keeping me awake at night. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, we'll manage, and I don't want you getting wound up again. I have enough on my plate with uh, this lot. Well, I can help with the bookkeeping. No, no, it's, it's not that. It's just with these little distractions over the last couple of months, we've let things slip. Oh. How much? Quite a bit. Uh, we're not in as bad a shape as the Japanese economy, but if the World Bank do have a branch in Liverpool, then, um... <laughs> We might just have to book an appointment. The big problem about this is that we're not into just killing someone at the drop of a hat. I thought you owed me a favour. Well, I do, but not this. I'm stuck, though. He's... He's affecting every part of me life. He's even going to get access to Kylie. I've got to get rid of him somehow. Look, oh, Lindsay, I know you helped get Alistair back for me, but that was saving a life. Okay. This is taking one. OK, well, I'll do it then. What? I don't know. Get me a gun or something. Yeah. A gun. You can at least do that for me, can't you? I think you'd better think very carefully about what you're saying. Last time you came here, you wanted Gary just beaten up because you couldn't stand the thought of anything more than that. Things have changed. That much? A couple of years ago when he left, he raped me. And then last week, he started to try it on again. The sicko. He would have done it in front of my Kylie. While your little girl was there? He had his filthy hands all over me. He wouldn't have cared what she saw. So I am serious. I want you to get me a gun. Because I am going to kill him. It happened near the dry cleaners. I know you're finding this hard to believe. But he drove it straight at me. You must have it wrong. He wouldn't do that. I swear. He was aiming it right at me. And it's not the first time. I've had enough of this. Carmel, sit down, please. This is important for all of us. Now, two weeks ago, I was hit by a car, and I ended up in hospital. And it's my bet that that was Tim as well. So, uh, have you always been past the Union? Yeah. Well, ever since I was at the LSE. You went there? <laughs> Stuck it for three weeks. Oh, it's a good university, isn't it? Oh, yeah, but I couldn't stand the uh, middle-class kids playing at being radicals. I'm sure they're being all playing. <laughs> so where are they now, then? They're running the city. Futures and commodities, eh? <laughs> yeah, radicals. So going there turns you to the union? In a way. Wanted to get where it mattered, where I might make a difference. Yeah. That's why I became a shop steward. I was up seeing all the girls getting messed around and work. I want to stay angry, love. You still angry? Yeah, even more so now. Seen it all in this city. Meccano, Jacobs, Dunlops. So don't picket lines with them all. Not my heart, then. That upsets me even now. People tell me I'm wasting my time keeping up the fight. My fella's a bit like that. He was at Laird's. Just got disillusioned. What about you, Margaret? What about when you know what to do and even the workforce won't back you up because they're scared? I don't know. I suppose if I can stay angry, I won't lose heart. Are you going to go to the police? And then what? You could get sent down. He'd lay in all kinds in prison, wouldn't he? Come up worse than he went in. Or maybe getting the police involved and make him see some sense. Letting him know that he can't get away with it. I've got no evidence, have I? It'll be my word against this. 
He's been a fool. I'm so sorry. <sighs> it's not your fault. The lad's got big problems. And when you find out where he is, I want to see him. You won't hurt him, will you? No, I just want to talk to him. There must be something we can do. <sighs> it's my problem. We said we'd stay mates, didn't we? I remember. A friend in need is a pest. <laughs> And how are you going to feel when he's standing there in front of you and you've got a gun pointed at his head? I don't know. I won't look at his eyes. You'll be terrified. You'll be shaking. It's nothing like in the movies. If you've got the bottle to pull the trigger, the gun will go off and you will have killed a man. That's what I want. Are you sure? You'll have his blood and maybe bits of his brain all over you. Is that what you want as no, well? Of course not. Oh, I don't care. But that's the reality, Lindsay. And any blood on you is forensic evidence. And if there's one single drop, the police will find it because you'll be the chief suspect. That's if they find the body. Oh, so what are you going to do? Chop it into pieces? Chuck it in the Mersey? Burn it? I'll just do what I have to do. What? You haven't got a clue what to do. Do you know the weight of a man's arm once you've chopped it off? Then there's the other arm. The legs, the torso, the head. This is serious stuff, Lindsay. I know. And then you'll need something to put the body in. How many bin bags do you think you'll need? They're not very strong, are they? You'll give it away because you don't know what you're doing. And have you thought about what it'll do to you? How do you mean? Emotionally. You'll be a different person. You will have killed Kylie's father. He's no father. Look, Lindsay, you came here to ask us to put the fighters on someone, and now you want to kill him. It's what I want. I don't think you're really sure. And deep down, Maybe it's not what you want. But it's my only way out. Look, Lindsay, go home. Let the law sort it out. The law can't guarantee mine and Kylie's safety. Just spend some time thinking about it, because maybe this is the wrong road for you to take. So, you're not going to help me? Go away and think about everything I've said. Everything. Then we'll talk again. You're reading my book. What are you doing back here? I startled you, didn't I? What was it? Did you think I was Ollie and you didn't want to get caught reading it? Don't be ridiculous. Anyway. Here's your own personal copy. Nice photo, I thought. Do you like the cover? I don't need a copy. I don't even like the tone of the book. Very fitting, I think. Book called A Love Affair Interrupted, for reasons I've already explained. And a handwritten inscription to Eleanor A. Love Affair Continued. Have you really written that? My own fair hand. You're as arrogant as all those companies you condemn for their vainglorious assumptions. Oh, a direct quote from my chapter on agri-economics, I believe. It's not bad for a book you don't even like the tone of. Can you go now, please? Mm, not while you want me around so much. <laughs> Prison really has dulled your senses for picking up on a hint, hasn't it? Stop the games, Eleanor. We'd have been in Ollie's bed making love if it wasn't for that builder the other week, and you know it. What I do know is I'd be happy if you left me alone for good. Well, I know you, Eleanor. I'm not that little A-level student anymore. I'm not the little girl who went weak at the knees every time she saw you. What are you then, Eleanor? I mean, forget the middle-class trappings. What about in here? Where's the passion? It's gone. No. The passion never goes. All I've got to do is peel away that veneer of denial, and I know I'll find the old Eleanor. Warm, caring, excitable. And like I say, passionate. Go away, Marcus. Please. Is that what you really want? Yes. Maybe I should back off a bit. Time to decide what you really want. I'll be around.
It's the Japanese Ford Capri, but does a 70s Toyota have the same pulling power? Deals on wheels test the sex drive of the old Celica. Next, here on 4. Yeah, I can just put that down. We'll be around the chippy by now. Yeah, I was just on my way. You all right? Yeah, I just got a little bit of soreness in the ribs, you know. I feel like Lennox Lewis has been using me for a punch bag. Mm. 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 So you got like, the slime ball still around, eh? Mm. Uh, so, no sign of tinhead on your travels? No, nothing. No, I'm still in one piece. So the van. Yeah, well, the reason for that is because you're not me. It's me that the lad's after. Oh, so you reckon, Sim? I know it was him because I saw him driving the car at me. He's tried it more than once and he still hasn't had me, so it's not going to happen again. The more I keep a low profile, the less chance he's got of making me into strawberry jam. Looks in if it was him. It was him. There's no doubt about it. You better do something about it then. Well, I've asked Carmel to have a word with him. Oh, you mean like says done over the years? Look, it's time you got the police involved. Come on, they're not going to give a monkeys about my wins, you know. Anyway, what are they going to do without proof? Well, they've only got my word for it that something really did happen. See Barry in Birmingham. He's taking some photos of this place down to show him. What photos? It sounds like they're planning to make some changes at the bar. He's took the photos so they can decide what colour paint to use. And does Jackie know? Well, she's there with Barry, isn't she? She's bound to be involved if there's going to be any changes made here. Hmm. Yeah, of course. So you missing Bruno then? It's a relief to have him not hanging around me for a change. Hey, you bought me these flowers, you know. Oh, they're really nice. Mm. They wanted me to take them up to the flats. They could be. You know, just for me to enjoy. So why didn't you? Well, it'd only be encouraging him, wouldn't it? What's wrong with that? You do like him. Yeah, but you've got to be careful what signals you give out, haven't you? So what are you doing talking to him in Morse code now? No, I mean signals like, you know, making him think that I'm leading him on. I told him to back off last week, didn't I? And look what I get this week. You're making it sound like it's a really strange thing to do. If he really likes you, he's not going to give up easy, is he? Seems to have really fallen for you. Yeah, well, he can fall the other way, can't he? I mean, the thing with Bruno is he's dead nice, but when he stayed the other night, I just couldn't get it out of my head how different he was to any other lad I've been with before. I mean, with Christian, yeah, to begin with, we had a laugh and we messed about and we were OK together at first, you know. But when I started to find out what he was like, I suddenly didn't feel important anymore. It was like he was using me. Like he was no different to my dad, really. But Bruno, he's, he's just dead different. We had a really good time together. And the fact that he is so nice, I mean, he'd probably only want to be with me for about five minutes, then he'd be off with someone better looking than me. Now, you don't know that, do you? And you're only going to find out by sticking with him. You know, if it doesn't work out, then just move on. 
You shouldn't give up so easy. It's worth working at. It's not like one keeps telling me. And considering you're not interested in him anymore, you seem to be talking about him an awful lot. I know. I'm just trying to sort out what's going on inside my head. Something keeps telling me not to let myself go with him. Because she's scared of being hurt again? <sighs> no. Just... just because I'm me. Please. Getting down to some heavy juicy cleaning, are you? Could be. I've just signed up with Von Dixon. I'm one of his great grannies. Oh, I heard he was on the lookout for some suitable staff. Well, I might not know much about computers or any of these modern jobs, but I do know how to clean. I should do. I've had years of practice. I know the feeling, love. Ron asked me if I'd be interested, you know, but having a toddler around the house, I didn't think I'd be able to cope. Well, you know what I like at that age. and He's got too much energy for me as it is. <laughs> oh, it seems a long time since my Greg was a toddler. He used to run me ragged. Mind you, he still does. Well, at least I won't get lost on my way to my first job. It's only in one of the uh, flats over the shops. Oh, right, which one? Oh, it's Mr Dixon's own flat. He said he wanted to test me out before he lets me loose on the paying customers. It's like a sort of a trial run, you know. What a cheeky. Listen, you'll have to watch Ron Dixon, you know. Keep a track on your hours. You can be a bit on the stingy side. You're telling me? He's getting his flat clean for nothing? For nothing? Oh, well, that's typical of Ron Dixon. I wouldn't stand for it, love. He's taking you for a ride. You've got to start as you mean to go on with Ron. You think so? <laughs> I know. Well, maybe I'd better go and see if I can find him. See if he can't be persuaded to play fair. Thanks for the tip. See ya. See ya. Hey, be gentle with him. <laughs> So, have you managed to work up any enthusiasm for your book fair? Oh, I'm trying very hard. I spent the last three days trying to pick out what stock to take. Oh, you'll do fine. I mean, you know the business inside out. And you're good at your job. All right. So that's why I'm in the frame for redundancy, is it? Because I'm good at what I do. You'll have the Tring literati throwing themselves at your feet. Well, my senior manager seems to be doubting that. Well, I could vouch for you. After all, you did choose me. So your good taste and judgment can't be called into doubt. Am I mistaken, or is there a certain friskiness in the air? Well, you are going away for a while. Hmm, and there are one or two things that you can't do using email. And you're leaving me all on my own. Apart from Louise and Danny popping home and the omnipresent eco-messiah. Thanks very much. What? Well, it's a real passion killer. What did I say? Well, you're holding me in your arms and you're thinking about Marcus. I mean, why does he have to keep coming between us? He's the last person I'm going to think about. Eleanor! Well, you keep going on about Paul and having some secret fella hidden away, you know? All I'm saying is that everything she does involves some other mystery person. I just don't want to see you get your fingers burned, that's all. <laughs> hey, nice, eh? I was only making sure we'd seen him. Yeah, I know, Sally. Hey, look, you can't carry on like this, you know. You'll end up a nervous wreck. I think I already am. I don't think I'd be better off staying at home till all this blows over. Hey, come on. I know what it's like, remember? I let all that business with Jenny drive you behind locked doors. And there's no way to live your life, I'm telling you. Come on, there's nothing coming. There was nothing coming when I nearly got run over last time. He came out of nowhere. Trust me. Come on. God, I feel like a three-year-old learning to cross the road for the first time. Hey, remember what you used to do when you was a kid? Look right, look left, run like hell. All right. Come on, sir. Hey, yeah. I don't suppose you happened to see Lindsay on the close before, did you? No. She is. Something about him, you know, he makes my flesh creep. I'll tell you what, I don't suppose he's got a card again. Hey, you're really getting paranoid now, sir. Hey, uh, better be careful there, you know. Why? Some of the spuds have got eyes, might be watching you. Get in. You have got to go today, have you? Well, yes. And especially with the way things are going in work. If I let the company down on this trip, I think that would be as good as handing in my resignation. But if I go, even though I might not want to, and they still decide they want to get rid of me, well, at least I'll be due some kind of redundancy payoff. And being cynical and hard-nosed about the whole business, that would help to pay the mortgage a bit longer. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm just being selfish. Well, in an ideal world, you could come with me. 
In an ideal world, there'd be no work for solicitors, and I'd have no income, and we couldn't afford for me to go. Putting aside the redundancy payoff for a minute, when it comes down to it, I work to live. I don't live to work. So, I'll stay, if you really want me to. No, I'll be fine. As long as you promise to ring me every evening. Promise. Anyway, I suppose there's a chance that something good might come out of this trip. Or the company might suddenly realize that I'm worth my weight in gold to them. And if that doesn't happen, well, at least they'll be amongst the right industry people. Wouldn't do me any harm to do a bit of networking. See if there's a the perfect job out there for me somewhere. Just waiting for me to be headhunted. You will be okay while I'm away. Yes, fine. Lonely, but fine. I'll make some coffee. Thanks, love. Two pounds Thanks change. Thanks a lot. Charlo. Hiya, love. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Saw Mr Carkill before. He seemed in a dead good mood. Oh, he is, love. He's got himself a new job at Brookie Comp, so he's walking on here. He's in the park now with our William swatting up on his history. Oh, I bet you're dead proud of him. More than you believe, love. Mind you, I'll be a lot happier when he's worked his month in hand. We can pay off a few bills then. <laughs> oh, it's nice when things work out for people. Yeah. Are you still enjoying working in the bar? Yeah, it's great. I've got a lot more responsibility, you know, with Jackie not being around. But you've got a lot to do with that new fella and all. Who you mean, Bruno? He's quite tasty, isn't he? Yeah, he's all right. I know if I was young and single, I'd be straight in there like a shot. Oh, he's not my type, really. I'm going to get back. Hiya. Hiya. See you, love, draw. Hiya. Hiya, you two. Kelly's brought you your lunch. Oh, aren't you good, eh? It's a lovely sandwich and an apple. And Kelly helps spread the butter. Oh, well, thanks a lot, love. That'll make you taste all the better, won't it? Are you going to go and see your granddad in the park? Well, we thought we might, didn't we? We can have a picnic. Oh, that'll be nice. And you can push little William on the swings, can't you? Do you love that? Yeah. Just got a few jobs to do at home first, though. All right, well, you better go and get on with those horrible jobs, haven't you? You don't want to be missing your playtime. Right, come on. Are you all right, love? Yeah. Fine. No sign of you, no. Know no. He'll have crawled off under a stone somewhere, hopefully. Don't let him get to you, love. You know, that's what he's counting on. Oh, I know, he just... What? Well, if it was just me, Mum, I could cope. But it's not, is it? It's Kylie as well. I mean, what's he doing to her that day? <sighs> oh, look, I'm sorry. I'll be fine. See you later. Do you mind if I shut this door? What are you joking about? You're speaking in here. I'd still rather have it shut. Why? Because <sighs> if Carmel doesn't get through to Tim, and he comes creeping up on me, I'll lay the door open, won't I, and he'll have lost the element of surprise. Yeah, and I'll have collapsed with heat stroke. I tell you, Mick, if he does come looking for me, if he comes through that door and goes for me, I won't be responsible for my actions. He's going to end up covered in boiling hot fat or something. <sighs> get a grip, will you, son? Get a grip? Well, someone's trying to kill me. I found him. Who? Ron? Oh, how did you get on? I managed to bring him out of my way of thinking. Oh, well done. Is he still in one piece? Of course he is. His wallet isn't, though. I made him pay me in advance. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> See ya, love. <laughs> well, this is a nice surprise. I don't get many people just dropping in to see me. Well, I tried ringing you, but you were engaged all the time. Yeah, I'll have been on the phone to Barry for ages talking about bar stuff. So, how come you're here, then? It's not wrong with my dad, is there? No, he's fine. He's been dead busy organising his great granny's business, so it's <laughs> really beginning to take off. So is this just a social visit then? Not exactly. Well, what's up? I don't know. Maybe it's just my imagination working overtime. Why? You've got a problem with that, aren't there? No, 
It's not me I'm worrying about. It's you. The closer it gets to you having a baby, the more nightmares I'm having. <laughs> nightmares? Hey, I'll be the one going through all the pain. You know what I mean. I'm talking about the Farnhams and whether they're going to leave you high and dry with this baby. <sighs> Katie, stop panicking. That's not going to happen. The Farnhams are being really upfront with me and I believe them. They're really looking forward to having two babies instead of just one. So, how are you then? Fine. Apart from worrying about you. So, how about you in the lump? Oh, not too bad. I eat it on the really hot days, though. I just feel so uncomfortable and I get dog tired dead quick. Where's Lisa? I was just working away today, but it's quite nice to have a bit of peace and quiet for the change. <laughs> Must be weird for her having you landed on her like this. Well, it was at first, yeah. She was really uptight. But we're a bit more meaty now. But we haven't exactly got loads in common, apart from watching Ali McBeal together. But the good thing is she's been dead helpful when I've been feeling sick all down. Well, I'll be glad to get home, though. <laughs> so, how's Rachel? She's fine. Mm, apart from the way she's hung up about Bruno. Do you know, I think our fair problem is she doesn't know what to do in a normal relationship. I reckon you're right. Hey, listen to me. Carrying Max Farmer's baby inside me and going on about normal relationships. Funny, isn't it? No matter how hard we try, you always seem to end up back talking about the Farnhams and the baby. Casey, honestly, there's nothing to worry about. They've said that they're still committed to taking this baby and they're not going to go back on that. Well, let's just hope they don't take. But just in case, if I was you, I'd be contacting a couple of adoption agencies. I mean, the last thing he wants is to be left holding the baby. Are you serious? Well, at least be checking what the procedures are. <sighs> it's not something you want to be leaving until the last minute. Yeah, well, it's not something I want to be even thinking about. Which is why I'm thinking about it for you. I know what it's like for you. You're giving yourself up for everything to go really well, and I can understand that. But I just want to make sure you're prepared in case the Farnhams do let you down. I'm not saying make any definite arrangements, but at least get hold of some leaflets about having the baby adopted, just to cover your back. Yeah, but I don't need to cover me back. I trust them. Even though you've barely seen them recently? Yeah, but that's been a relief, not a problem. I mean, they were crawling all over me the first few months I was pregnant. Exactly. And now they're not. Now they seem to be keeping the distance and it just doesn't feel right to me. I feel like they're isolating you so they don't even have to think about you anymore. If I was you, I'd have that phone book out now and start looking up adoption agencies. Right. I'll be off then. Drive safely, won't you? As always. And send my regards to Tring. I will do. Well, now that I'm ready for the off, I don't really feel like going anymore. Oh, come on. What about all that networking you're going to be doing? I'd rather be here with you or you there with me. Sorry, no can do. But when I get back, we should definitely get a few days together. Yeah, sure, if you like. Where do you fancy? Um, Hawaii, Acapulco, Fiji? Well, I was thinking more about the Lake District or maybe around Buxton. You do a bit of walking. Sounds great. Anyway, you should be going. You will call when you get there, won't you? Listen, you're not worrying about Marcus showing his beardy face again, are you? Because I can try and pull out if you are. The only thing I'm worried about is missing you. And the only time I even think about Marcus is when you mention his name. What are you doing? I'm going to unpack and cancel my hotel. But you can't. You might jeopardise your job. Well, I only have to pull out for the weekend. And the trade part of the fair doesn't start till Monday anyway. I'm quite happy for the great unwashed not to be mauling my stock over the weekend anyway. Are you really certain? Totally. All I want is to spend the weekend with you. Tell me, please, my hands are all sticky here. All right, Kylie, can I come and see Mum? All right. Kylie, will you go and play upstairs, please? Oh, I'm playing here. Upstairs, now. Is that right where she is? Shows how much you know. Kylie. So, here we are then. Pay up time. Do you seriously think I've got 12 grand for you? I hope you have. You're just gonna have to keep on open, aren't you? Because I haven't got it today. I won't have it tomorrow. 
next week or any time. So, there's no reason for you to hang round, is there? Yes, there is. For me money. I've told you. I haven't got anything to give you, so just do one, OK? Oh, that's very nice. You're the last person I'd ever be nice to. You were nice to me when we just got married. <laughs> you couldn't keep your hands off me then. But I didn't know any different then. I know a lot more now, though. I know you're just a sly little meth. You should be being nice to me, not standing here slagging me off. Why should I? Because you're my wife. So, like I said to you last week, if you haven't got the money to pay me, maybe it's time you paid me in kind. Gary, don't. Listen, all I want is what I'm owed, and then I'm gone. You'll never have to see me again. Well, that's all I want, a big stash of cash, and then I'm well gone. I haven't got any money to give you. And if you touch me, you're going to really wish you hadn't. This money business. You obviously need some help. I need help? You know, a few ideas of how you're going to get the cash together. I'd laugh if you weren't so pitiful. Because once you've got it sorted... Which will be never. Oh, once it's in my hand, then I'll be out of your life, won't I? Gary, I've got nothing. My dad's got nothing, and you're getting nothing. Now, I've got more interesting things to do than talk to you, like the washing up. You know, you've still got a good body. If you haven't got the money to pay me, you know what to keep me going for a couple of days while I'm waiting. You're coming nowhere near me. Mum! Kylie, I thought I told you to play upstairs. I want to play outside. Well, I've told you, you can't. Hey, Kylie, never mind what your mum says. You go and play outside if you want to. Kylie, upstairs, now. Are you still here? Well, where else am I going to be until I get what I came for? Well, don't hold your breath. Because I'll be dead of old age before the message gets through your thick skull. You're the one who's not getting the message. Maybe you'll get it when one day you turn around and Kylie won't be where you last saw her. She'll be gone. Well, that'd really screw you up, wouldn't it? You lost it when she was in that explosion. You know, anything can happen to a kid when it's away from its mother. But nothing need happen to Kylie. Not if you pay me off first. Call yourself a father? Threatening your own child? I'd rather be dead before I let it out of my sight while you're around. Yeah, but, Lindsay, I'm talking about just being out there. Like when you go shopping, I'm going to be there watching. When you take her to school, I'm going to be there watching. When you take her to the swings, your life is not going to be your own. I don't have to take Kylie away from you to hurt her, do I? I'm just going to be there, getting under your skin, and you are going to get so screwed up that she is going to start to hate every single word you say. Every time you drag her away because you've seen me hanging around, it's you she's going to start to blame. It's you she's going to start to hate. And believe me, I am going to be there until you are desperate to pay me off. Just get out, will you? OK, I'm going this time. But guess what? I am going to be back. Gary, just get out! Same time, same place. Next week, same Gary, OK? And the next week, and then the next. For as long as it takes until I get my money! Finnegan, please. She knows I might be calling. It's Lindsay Corkill. Lynn, give a love to Kylie, will you? <laughs> Mrs. Finnegan, it's Lindsay again. Lindsay Corkill. I wanted to let you know. After the stuff we spoke about the other day, I've thought it all through. I want to go through with it. I want him dead. What a slight change of pace as Friday comedy kicks off in a moment with friends and Ross dating the dirtiest girl in New York. <laughs> 